And once again, we bring in our other network that joins us. I'm Brian Tewitt of MCM Ministries Bible LA. And uh, on behalf of my wife, Anita, yours truly, Brian Tewitt, the man, we thank you for joining us. Today, we are continuing with our peace message. We were away for close to two weeks for our conference and visiting family all over the place. So, uh, But we come into a vital part where, we, as we are speaking of today, uh, the, the rebels have, have assassinated four people in Syria. Do, does that make things better? No. Does, is what is going to happen to the actual leadership? We have starvation, um, accountability that is, or lack of accountability happening in Somalia, and it could be even worse ever, as well as the Sahara region that stretches a good through the middle portions of Africa. Diseases of India, diseases in, in Cambodia and uh, Uganda. And we go and we say, why? Why is this happening? If there was a God, why is God allowing this to happen? Prophecy is coming true, brethren. Prophecy is coming true. So, let's, our foundation scripture today for our, our lesson, one of our many lessons of peace, peace, the ways of peace we're speaking of tonight, well, and our foundation scriptures, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 9. So let's get into that and, we, and get a clean sheet of paper. And let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the everything that you do to us, the blessings. For without you, we are nothing. We lift up the rays of praise. We lift up upon the PMR. We lift up in the AMR, wherever we are living. Our repentance and our prayer so you can prepare to, to pour new mercies on this new day. We thank you for being, every piece of our limbs being able to move. Every eyes can see the depth of your love. Bring us into your heart. Bring us into the ways. Bring us into your pattern of your life, O oh Lord. And guide us and feed us with the living word of God. Guide us and feed us with all nature by nurturing us. For you are the vine and we are the branches. And we thank you for all in all. In the marvelous name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 9, the ways of peace. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have, have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the Lord of peace shall be with you. And the Lord of peace shall be with you. Thank you, Jesus, for the reading of this blessed word. Peace of mind, brethren, is something that we will all want before we can have peace through the world we have to, to bring peace into our own minds, defeat anger. We all want to be able to rest, not to have to worry, to feel free to enjoy life, family, friends, work, church, etc. We want to be able to enjoy ourselves and not to be burdened down and w with worries that rob us of vigor, life, and energy. Sometimes when we can't find a peace of mind, We'll find reasons to get depressed. We'll find reasons of not going to work or not doing anything around our house or, or for our family. We often get angry and lash out at God or, or someone else near to you. What do you do to get peace? I mean, real peace in your life. What do you do? Where do you start? The best place is with God. God wants you to have true peace to having you not worry about anything, act of thinking. Worry is a sin, believe it or not. It means you are not trusting God. God says in verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. That doesn't mean worry. The word anxious is a Greek here for, it means to be troubled with cares. It hasn't given you the command without you being able to carry out. And he said, to the man with a withered hand in Mark chapter 3 verse 5, stretch forth your hand. But the man could not, 
Yet he obeyed and did, and did it, because the Holy Spirit is in you. You are able to live by faith, and not worry, not much what happens, because the Spirit empowers you to be faithful. Let me say that again, brethren. Are you with me? The Spirit empowers you to be faithful, to trust, to yield to the Lord's will. With the Spirit, you are able to trust God beyond your ability to know what will happen in what? Your life. Your life. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you shall eat or drink, or about your body, or what you will wear. Is not life more, than, more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Do not worry about, in verse 31, do not, so do not worry, saying, what shall I eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Verse 32, for the pagans are run after those things, and your heavenly Father knows the things you need them. Verse 33, but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And First Peter chapter 5, verse 37. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That's from the NIV. Also from the NIV, chapter, John chapter 14, verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me, meaning Jesus Christ. God doesn't want you to worry because worry means you do not trust God. Sounds very, well, I worry all the time. Then why, why, why? Play your entire life on the altar of God he has laid before you. Brethren, this is not a laughing matter. We are living in the end times of end times. They have all to cast our worries upon the shoulders of God. God is providing you all, you all along. Look at the cross. Jesus freely gave his death. He wasn't murdered. He freely gave his death so you could live and have that eternity in the kingdom of heaven. That is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. That is your goal. Matthew 6.13 Ask, seek, and knock from Matthew 7.7 7. You have not because you ask not. So why aren't we asking? But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God. All things in your life are, are, are of concern of to, to God. The big and the small, where to move, who to marry, what job to get, even your hobbies, leisure times. The peace that God gives you will guard your minds. The peace that God gives you will strengthen you. Because of the cross, you, do not ha you have access to the throne of God, which is why it says, with thanksgiving, because of the cross, the proof of God's faithfulness in the presence of God there is peace. So let us move into the presence of God as we pray ceaselessly. In, in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 16, verse 11, you have made known to me the path of life. You will, you will fill me with joy in your presence, with the eternal pleasures of your right hand. Practice the presence of God. How, how do we practice the presence of God? Pray. In, your, in prayer, you are transformed. Trust me, brethren. In your prayer, you are transformed. By praying, you will, you will in turn, what to, what to think of all holy purposes, all holy things. That is why we come to our next point. God wants you to have a true peace by meditating on what is holy of the act of thinking. Your mind have been set free from slavery to sin. Romans 8 verse 6. 
The mind of sin is death, but the, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. God wants you to fill your heart with what is good. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Whatever is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, or good repute, excellent, worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. God wants you to think to me on truth, purity, and excellence. On excellence, brethren, excellence. God wants you to understand the excellency that you are living, abiding, and the royalty of God's family. Psalms 119, verse 78. I will me meditate on your precepts. The precepts of God, the word of God is truth, purity, and excellence. You are a champion. You have the victory. Fight the fight of good faith. God will take care of your enemies, those that persecute you, those that betrayed you, have denied you. Meditate on the Word of God so that you might be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Don't be anxious for anything. Pray to, pray to Him for anything. Brethren, we come into this time frame. We come into this dwelling place to bring the peacefulness, to bring the loving truth, to bring God's family of confessions, God's family of love, guiding us, protecting us, wanting all in all to be with us, to guide us in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one mind, one judgment of Christ. Let us all come, brethren, let us all come into the purposes of God with the meditation of God's love. Bringing of His reality into our time. To go into His measurement of our love, of our truth, the truth shall set us all free, brethren. But what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? We are living in the end times of end times. What more can we have? What more can we say that we have to go with the steps of God? The steps with God brings peace into our life. It sounds very simple. So let's do it. The seven steps, the seven blessings of peace. To want to have a life, to live a, a fulfilling life. The peace of God is the catalyst of a, of a fulfilled life. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and, through, and of Jesus our Lord. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 21. Now the mind of the flesh, which is a sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death encompasses all the miseries arising from, from sin, both here and hereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul, peace, but now forever. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Be born again to move into the re realization of God's loving truth, to move into the realities that God wants you to have. Brethren, we pray ceaselessly without end. We give unto the knowledge of God's holiness, His truth, this truth shall set us all free. Romans 10.13 Echoes, bellows, sings to your name. And this is for those who that are not saved, and those that need to be recommitted with Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Brethren, 
move forward into the peacefulness of God. Move forward into the into the beautiful truth that God loves you. Come into His glory. Come into that time frame. Come into that peace right now. Brethren, repeat this off to me. For those who don't know Christ and those who want, need to be recommitted, dear God, I admit I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin except Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life, fill me and take control and to help me become the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Father, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward. That's my wife praising your name in the background. I am singing in your name, but most important, the angels of heaven are singing your name before the throne of God. Before the throne of God. It doesn't get any better than that, brethren. Most important, brethren, you now have the growing orchards of Galatians 5.22, the nine fruits of the Spirit growing inside of you, flowing from you. You were, you were once witness to, now be a witness to others. Bring the lost to the kingdom of God. Raise the praise every day. Be a witness unto others every day. Go, brethren. And we also, Anita, and your school of the man, invite you to become a financial partner into our ministries. We are a fruitful church here in the United States. Our full name is Money Star Communications Network slash MCM Ministries. Our church educational format of Bible studies is Bible LA. That's our, our, our auxiliary. But we want you to come into the family of MCM Ministries, Money Star Communications Network. We want you to travel with us, be part of our evangelical team, our medical team, to transform lives with all the other auxiliaries that we have. No matter where you live, we want you. And as you, the p power, though, is not in the sower of who you are, what you are. The power is in the seed. As you plant your seed into this ministry, the windows of heaven will open up above you and for you that you'll have no room to place a blessings from you. We invite you to join us with these broadcasts. We've been away for two weeks with with our family and crusades in other parts of the, of the United States, we want you to be our partner. Again, you can go to our website, click on the donation link if you don't want to go go, go there. Please go into uh, our contact link, send us your check to our contact address right there. We love you in the name of the Lord, and we shall change, and you shall change the world together as a change maker and peacemaker but in the name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, we are here to stand on your justified position. When you gave your life to Jesus, you were justified by faith. You were acquitted, declared righteous, and given us a right standing with God through faith. As a member of God's family, it is your inheritance to what? Enjoy the peace of the Lord. You need to stand in this exalted position in Christ and take possession of what belongs to you by faith. Be spiritually minded. The spiritual mind is life and peace both now and forever. But the mind of the flesh goes along with, with its misery associated with sin, including lack of peace and ultimately death. Therefore, to live a fulfilling life, you need to you need to mind a thing mind the things and expressions of God. Increase your knowledge of God by getting into the word of word of the Lord. Now if you're let's say thirty and above or twenty or above and you spent your early years of childhood having your mom discipline you with your Bible, but you claim you still know the Bible but you've been away from church for fifteen, sixteen, twenty years you must still increase your knowledge of the Lord. Why? Because it's a different world than 20 or 30 years ago. They're going to be reading the scriptures up. Your mom taught you a lot different when you were 8 versus now when you're 28 or 38. You now see it in a different depth as a man versus a child. As I just said in our last service, mankind versus mankind, before 
chapter 1 on a two-week hiatus. We must first defeat anger with our own minds and have the victory that, and understand and grasp the victory that God has always given us and to move into by being anxious for nothing. Anxiety is a sign that you are lacking the peace of God. That you don't absolutely trust God. When you are anxious, you push God away from you. And you can't have a fulfilled life without God. Anxiety-free life allows God to flood the peace of the Lord within you. Be grounded in God's love. A life rooted in the love of God is a life full of God. God's love within you assures you the richest measure of God's presence, which includes His peace. Get into a Bible-believing faith church, fellowship with the saints, midweek Bible studies, Sunday services, small group Bible studies. These broadcasts that we come to you seven days a week. Brethren, we love you. We need you. Be a worker of good deeds. Be a doer of good works in one of, the, in one of these steps to increase the peace of God. There is no peace for workers of, of wickedness. Peace of God of what you sow, you will reap. The wicked cannot sow evil and reap peace. Therefore, you enjoy, therefore, for you to enjoy the peace of God and live a, a fulfilling life, you need to constantly be a worker of good deeds. In conclusion, you cannot live a fulfilled life without the peace of God. Everlasting peace is from God. The world is incapable of offering it. When you flow from the life when you follow the, the above seven steps to increase the peace of the Lord, you will surely enjoy the peace that money cannot buy. Start today and experience tremendous change in your life. Brethren, we need to have that change. We need to have that truth coming to us. We need to bring the bountiful steps to increase everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, we love you. We come before you to change your life and love and the liberty of the Holy Spirit. We're giving you the Word of God. We're not giving you a showcase of great theatrics. We're giving you the living Word of God. Be changed be as a change maker in the world through the living word of God. Come into us, brethren. Feel the love of the truth coming to you. And as you take this good measurement, understand that God is bringing change to you right now. God is bringing you that ever-increasing life to you right now. God wants you to have true peace by putting you into practice what you have learned, the act of doing, backing our faith with works. He wants you to trust Him for everything, to pray to Him for anything, meditate on what is holy, meditate on what is holy. God wants you to have true, true peace. Romans chapter 8 verse 6 the mind of a sinful man is death but the mind of a controlled but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace that's the NIV, NIV translation of Romans chapter 8 verse 6 brethren God wants you to have true peace by putting into practice what you have learned again hearing is receiving but is hearing done my wife and I will repeat the same scriptures but it is our duty that God created every one of us on this earth for God not to destroy. So we give you choices. The good, the bad, and the ugly, we make you uncomfortable by sharing the honest love of God. And our calling is not so much to be easily explained as a, as a resume from the ways of man. It is a calling by God that is very difficult to explain because it's a gift from God. Brethren, this is all for you. 
This is all for your change. This is all for your love. When we speak of war, when we speak of peace, the enemy speaks of, of war. When we speak the living word of God, Satan tries his best to destroy us. That's including that's my wife and myself. I survived 77 assassination attempts in a very short time span. I never quit preaching the word of God. I never walked away from the task. God has blessed me with an unconventional calling of his weapons of artillery, not mine. And we go into the worlds of the unchurched, from the Pakistan, Afghanistan, to Kenya. From these broadcasts, we have, thanks to you, we have set up missionary teams. My wife herself has preached through these broadcasts to 10,000 people in the gypsy nations of Pakistan with one broadcast. And a good percentage of those came forward in the name of Jesus. We come to you, brethren, in all honesty, meekness, humility, and understanding that the change of God brings us the peace of mind. Peace is a gift from God. It cannot be negotiated. It cannot be anything that represents a ways of men. It can only be prayed through. Brethren, we love you. And each and the man, we come to you with many gifts that we want to share with you. Many gifts we shall plant in your name. Again, we invite you to be a sowing seed into this ministry and your financial blessings, your return on investment will go beyond your wildest, wildest dreams in Jesus' name. And brethren, we also want you to send us your prayer request. Go to our, our website, bryantu.com, click on the link of prayer requests, send that in abundance and we read them, we'll read them for you through our broadcast. And also brethren, we love you. We, we encourage you to join us. We encourage you to be a financial partner with us, travel the world to save the lost and those that need you to be a change, ma change maker and peacemaker. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go before the throne of God and pray out. Brethren, we thank you for this time, this endless realm of your love that brings us to your road of grace, that brings us to your straight and narrow. For many are called a few are cho chosen. We take this message and go and pro proclaim the living word of God. Go and pro proclaim the abundance of your truth to be a witness, to lift up our repentance daily and our prayers daily. So, dear Lord, as this, new, as this evening ends, the AM hours are birthed in many parts of the world, from Africa to Europe to India. May you pour the new mercies on all every day. We ask you to, we also lift up to you, God, that we... First, we said that we want to know you ever so more every day than we knew you yesterday. And then give us all the wisdom and discernment that you can pour down, down upon us. Give us a mindset of clarity so we can see all those that wish to help us. In your, the matchless name of Jesus, peace to the world. Peace from the cross. Peace from this ministry. Peace from the throne room of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, that concludes our broadcast with this evening. evening. And good morning to you. Do stay up to date with all of our news and information of our exciting crusades at BrianTewitt.com, BrianTewitt.com. We thank you for your time. Until next time, we walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir, audios. Good day for the people.